Crash by Jerry Spinelli. Chapters 25 to 26, read for you by Mrs. Shoemaker. Chapter 25. November 5th. I can't stop laughing. I keep picturing Webb doing his butt slide across the floor and the look on Jane Forbes' warthog face. I'll tell you, it was worth every minute of the three-day in-school suspension I got for it, and the one-week grounding when my parents got the letter from the vice principal. Hey, was Scooter around? I hardly noticed. I'm so popular, I could probably be school president. I'd get the vote of everybody who was glad to see little Mr. Cheerleader get dumped by a real man. My hand still hurts from all the high fives I got the Monday after the dance. It gets better. Guess who got kicked off of cheerleading? It all had to do with that mall business. It seems that Webb and Forbes started missing cheerleading practices and meetings. Then they started missing actual games like field hockey and soccer. What they were doing... They were spending all their free time selling those stupid t-shirts and parading their signs around and wallowing in the mud over on Route 31 where the mall's going to be. The cheerleading coach told them, Okay, enough's enough. If you want to be cheerleaders or you want to be crusaders, that's up to you. But if you want to keep being cheerleaders, just don't miss any more games. And especially don't miss any football games. So yesterday we played Upper Milford. Rotten day. Never stopped raining. The whole game long, you could hear these raindrops like on a roof, except they're landing on your helmet, which I guess is your roof, right? Anyway, all the cheerleaders were there, including the two mall stallers. In fact, the cheerleaders outnumbered the spectators. There were exactly four people in the stands. One of them was Scooter, of course. A little water never bothered that old swabby. The cheerleading coach and two others but not Webb's parents. That should have been a clue. The cheerleaders had on these little see-through plastic raincoats with hoods. Webb just looked adorable in his. I'm sure they all, except Scooter, wished the game would be called off. Football isn't for fruitcakes. Football doesn't take any crap from the weather. I have to admit, though, it was hard to play, th play right. Slipping, sliding all over the place, passing, forget it fumbles galore. Even I fumbled once. The first half ended with no score. When we came out of, for the second half, there were two less cheerleaders. Webb and Forbes were gone. Later in the fourth quarter, on a third and ten from our own eleven-yard line, we sprang a double revor reverse, and I took it all the way for an eighty-nine-yarder. That was the game. 6-0. But afterward, nobody was talking about me. They were talking about Webb and Forbes and how the cheerleading coach fired them on the spot for leaving at halftime. <laughs> it gets better. Chapter 26 where, th where they were was over at Route 31 at the mall place, just, which is just a big old weed field right now. Somebody had found out the bulldozers were coming, so the naughty cheerleaders stayed for half the game and rushed over. That's all I knew at the time. Scooter was waiting outside with two umbrellas. We walked home. Fast forward to six o'clock. Scooter and I are eating. Abby comes bursting in, streaking to the den, yelling, TV! And by the time we get in there, she's got the TV on, punching buttons, muttering, Channel 10! Channel 10! She turns up the volume. She sits cross-legged on the floor, her face an inch from the screen. She's pantsing like a dog. She's totally drenched and muddy all over. Scooter gets a throw rug and some newspapers and makes her sit on them. He pulls off her shoes and socks. You're wetter than a wharf rat, he says. But she just mutters, keep watching, keep watching. After the first commercial, we see. They show the Route 31 mall location. They show the bulldozers coming down the pike in flatbed trucks. And then they show the Looney Tunes, Webb and Forbes and a couple of other students and a couple grown-ups, and there I am! There I am! The wet one herself. They're all standing at the entrance to the weed field, waving their signs and chanting, No more malls! No more malls! 
The truck stops. Traffic ties up. Cops come. The TV lady puts a mic in the face of some white-haired geek. It's Webb's father. He says, How can we criticize others for burning down the rainforests when we're covering our earth with asphalt? And then, There I am! Me! Me! Listen! Shh! The mic is in dear little Abby's face, and she's saying, We don't need more stores. We should take better care of what we have. My mother buys my clothes a second time around. And then the camera shows the flatbed drivers parking alongside the road and getting out and going home. And the news switches to a fire in the city. Abby jumped up. We stopped them! We won! Did you see me? She did a cartwheel out of the den. That was me! And she threw open the front door and shouted to the world, I'm on TV! I'm a star! I looked at Scooter. Why doesn't she get a little excited? That was yesterday, Friday. The whole story didn't catch up with my mother till today. She came storming home in the middle of the morning and herded Abby upstairs. I went up to my room. I left my door open. Abby's door was shut, but I could hear pretty good. It went something like this. Mom. You can't be going around trying to block bulldozers. Abby. Why not? Mom. Never mind why not. You're only ten years old. That's reason enough. Abby. I'm ten and three quarters. Mom. Don't get smart. Abby. Don't you want to save the earth? Mom. I want to make a good home for my children. That's what I want. Abby. Well, I want to make a good world for my children. Silence for a while. I guess that was a point for the daughter. My mother must have looked fumy because then... Abby. You're just mad because I'm against them all and you're working for them. Mom. I'm running out of patience is what I am. Abby. You're fed up with me? Mom. I'm... Abby. You're going to tear my picture down from the wall and burn it and destroy all my dental records so that there'll never be any trace of me. Another silence. This time I figured my mom was biting her lip trying not to laugh. When she finally spoke, her voice started out slow, then picked up speed. Mom. You campaign against your own mother who's trying to make a good life for you. You refuse to eat meat, were informed that you tr wish to turn our backyard into a jungle, and to top it off, you announced to the entire world on television that I buy you secondhand clothes. Abby. Well, it's true. Mom. No, dear, it's not true. At least not completely. Abby. What do you mean? Mom, I mean one of the reasons why your father and I work so long and hard is so you don't have to wear second-hand clothes. But just to humor you, yes, I do buy a few things a second time around, but you're so stubborn. So when I shop for you, sometimes to get you to wear something respectable, I just tell you I bought it from there. Silence. Then squawkily, Abby. You lied? Isn't this from second time around? Mom, it's new. Abby, well, I, I don't want it. Here. And I guess you lied to your own child about this, too, huh? Here. And this. And this. And this. And the door flew open. Out she came, stampeding down the hall. My mom called, What are you wearing? But my sister was charging into Scooter's room and slamming the door. <laughs> I'll tell you, if you never saw a fifth grade girl run down the hallway wearing nothing but boxer shorts with red and blue anchors, you got a real treat coming. I swear, if I don't stop laughing in the next minute, I'm going to die.